Lesson 18, sums, differences, products, and quotients of functions and composition of functions. Guess what? I'm teaching the same stuff in pre-cal today. Woo! So, you're seeing some review is what I'm saying. So, I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe there's some, you know, maybe it's slightly different, that kind of thing. But same general idea that we are talking about functions, composition of functions. So, um, at the top, there's some basic rules there. These are not new to you. The idea is if you have f plus g of x, that is the same as adding f of x and g of x. If you have f minus g, that's the same as doing f of x minus g of x. Um, same thing with multiplication. If you have fg, it's the same thing as doing f of x and g of x, and with division. If you have f over g, it's the same as doing f of x divided by g of x. So um, let's look at the first set here. Let f of x equal x squared and g of x equals square root of x. Find the following, including the domain of each. So we're going to find what it asks, and then we're also going to find the domain. So a is f plus g of x. What's that mean? Okay. f is x squared, g is square root, so x squared plus square root of x. Does that clean up, or does that simplify? Can you add an x squared and a square root? No. So that right there is the answer to what is f plus g of x. Now, if you'll notice, it also asks us to find the domain of each. So my job now is to find the domain of x squared plus square root of x. So are there any restrictions on x squared plus square root of x? In other words, restrictions on what I can use for x values. Okay. So what do we know about a radical? Whatever's under the radical has to be positive, or how do we express that? X can be yeah, greater than or equal to zero. Okay. Any restrictions on the X squared? No. X squared is X squared. Um, the square root of X, though, X cannot be negative. So, what's my domain? And let's see, I'm trying to remember. I don't remember what the book did. I have it written two different ways. One of which, do you remember that set notation we did? Yes. So where we start with the brace, and we start by saying x is a member of the reals, such that. So it's x. I can't remember what that little backwards e is called, but x is a member of the reals, such that, what did we just say? x must be greater than or equal to zero. That's one way to express the domain. Okay? And again, you'll see some of that in the book, and that's why I want you to be familiar with it. The other way is, what would this be in interval notation? Drag it zero. zero to infinity. If it's x greater than or equal to zero, starts at zero, goes to infinity. Infinity is always parentheses. Zero. Can x be zero? Yes, so it's a bracket. So, two different ways to express something. I encourage you to be familiar with both. Okay, let's try B. F minus G of X. What is F minus G? Okay. X squared minus square root of X. Can that be cleaned up any? No, that does not simplify. What about the domain? Yeah, is it going to change? I mean, the only thing that changed, I still have the x squared, I still have the square root of x, the only thing that changed is there being subtraction. So we're still going to have the fact that x has to be positive. Is it too much cheating if I just write the same? Okay. <laughs> How about, maybe I shouldn't use the word cheating. 
Is it too much short cutting? How's that? Is that better? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's an appropriate shortcut, okay? Okay. C. FG of X. So what's that mean? F times G. So in this case, it's going to be X squared times the square root of X. <coughs> One option is to leave your answer as this. What's the other option? How could I combine these? Not exactly. You might be on it now. Think of this in terms of exponents, right? X squared is X squared. What is the square root of X with an exponent? X to the 1 half. Remember that? And so then if it's x squared times x to the 1 half, put that together, and that's x to the 5 halves. Because remember, when you're multiplying, the bases are the same. You add the exponents. So 2 plus a half is 2 and a half, or 5 halves. So I have both of these um, indicated as possible answers, x squared square root of x or x to the 5 halves. What about domain here? Yeah. If you go back to the original here, we were multiplying x squared and a square root, right? So you still can't have a negative. And if you think x to the 5 halves, that's taking, that's still, that denominator of 2 is still taking a square root. So I'm going to shortcut it and write same again. Okay. D? D is F over G, so this means I'm doing X squared over square root of X. Okay. And we can yeah, we can do this two different ways. Um, Jack said rationalize. Do you guys remember rationalize? If there's just a single square root in the denominator. To get rid of that square root in the denominator, you multiply by the same square root. We're multiplying the denominator by the square root of x. We're multiplying the numerator by the square root of x. On top, that is x squared times the square root of x. On bottom, what is the square root of x times the square root of x? X. Can we clean that up? What can happen here? Yeah. The X squared and the X, they're neither under a radical, can cancel. And so we'll have 1X cancel, leaving me with okay, X square root of X as a possible answer. Sorry, I'm on the edge of the page there. Or like the previous one, we could change it to fractional exponents. What would x radical x be in terms of exponents? Yeah. You have x to the first, x to the one half. When you add them, it's x to the three halves. I have both down. I'll take both. Domain. So overall, what's the same issue? We still have a square root of x, right? And what did we say about square root of x? It has to be positive. In the previous ones, if you go back to a, notice how did I write a? I wrote that x had to be greater than or equal to 0. Because can you take the square root of 0? Yeah, you can take the square root of 0. Square root of 0 is 0. Now, what's different about this one? You can't have a 0 because my square root is in the denominator. You can still take the square root of 0, but can you have 0 in the denominator? No. And so instead, this is going to just be x 
greater than zero. So it's almost the same other than it's not equal to zero. Correct. Okay. Yes, correct. Valid point. Always go back and think about the original because if there was a fraction in the original, you couldn't have zero in that original denominator. Yes. Okay, so you can do this one of two ways. X is a member of the reals such that X is greater than zero. Or interval notation. Yeah, still zero to infinity, but it's parentheses. Okay. So finding the f plus g, f minus g, f times g, f divided by g was not the difficult part here. Having to stop and think about domain, though, was a little bit more challenging, I'm sure. Questions there? Okay. Compositions. Shall we talk about fog? <laughs> talk about how there has been a lack of fog on the way to school lately, right? I like I I do. I always I get out of bed, I look out the window before I head to the shower. Yeah. And I that's what I always do. Even though at this point in the year it's still mostly daylight when we come to school, so it really have to be serious fog for a delay right now while it's not dark in the mornings. But I looked and because of the air conditioner or whatever, our fog, my window is kind of like misted over. And I was like, Okay, wait a minute, I gotta check a different window. I can't tell now. So Okay. Example two. Okay, you guys remember fog? Other than the fog we just talked about? Fog? <laughs> okay. Um, remember, it's not a multiplication dot. This is a composition dot. For a composition circle, has it's an open circle there. So F composed of G of X, remember, is F of G of X. Since G is on the inside, that means we're going to take G and plug it into F. Okay. Yeah, you need to know that fog is f of g of x. Yes. And to me, it kind of comes naturally. I mean, once you get into it. Yeah. Okay. So they give us f and g. f is x squared plus 2. g is 3x plus 5. And they give us this to form the composition function fog. And then they want us to talk about the domain. So we're going to find fog. You might be able to jump right in. That's fine. If you want to jump in. Otherwise, I'm going to write that this is f of g of x. And so that means g goes into f. So as I, I'm going to write f, but every place I see an x, I'm going to replace it with whatever g is. So my f is x squared plus 2. That's my overall function here. I'm plugging g into it. So what am I plugging in? 3x plus 5. So where does that 3x plus 5 go? It goes in place for x. So this is going to be, instead of x squared, 3x plus 5 squared. And then there's still a plus 2. So we wrote x squared plus 2. It's just our x value changed. Can you simplify that a little bit? Okay, 3x plus 5 quantity squared is FOIL. So 3x times 3x is 9x squared. 3x times 5 is 15x plus another 15x, so plus 30x. 5 times 5. 25 plus the 2 that's there also outside makes a total of 27 if you are that talented. Can we go ahead and put 27? No. Domain. So this is where you kind of have to take it all in together. You have to think about the final answer. You also have to think about what was f and what was g. 
So domain. Okay. Do we have any radicals in fog, F, or G? No square roots. Do we have any denominators? No denominators. So are there any numbers that we can't use? Okay. So options. You can do the fancy R for all reals. Or an in interval notation, it's negative infinity to positive infinity. And again, I say you can use either or, meaning I'm, I will accept both. Again, you need to be familiar and understand both notations. Okay, just because you never know what you'll see on the AP test. Okay, ready for B? Stuck. Use the function f of x equals 2 plus sine x. g of x is x minus pi over 2. Find f of g of x. So what are we basically finding? Fog. They didn't call it fog here, but we're finding fog. Okay, can you think through this? I like to think I'm going to take F and I'm going to plug G in. So G is going to go every place I see an X. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what am I going to write? Yes. Not parentheses there. <laughs> Not parentheses there, but okay. So 2 plus sine of x minus pi over 2. Because it was sine x, and we plugged in x minus pi over 2. My brain was going in the right direction. I just wasn't speaking correctly when my brain was fine. Now, um, okay, so right here, sine of x minus pi over 2. There's some question about cosine over here. So side note. Okay, what is that identity that they're trying to come up with? Yep. Okay, so the question is, is that identity usable here? So it's sine of pi over 2 minus x equals cosine x. We have sine of x minus pi over 2. We've done this before. In order to change this sine of x minus pi over 2 to become sine of pi minus 2 over x, or pi over 2 minus x, you factor out a negative. So I'm going to rewrite this. Instead, it's 2 minus sine of pi over 2 minus x. You can do that. So all I did is just I changed both signs and factored out and put a negative out front. And so now, if I do that, instead of 2 minus sine of pi over 2 minus x, I can do 2 minus cosine x. It's one of those identities to be equivalent, you know, to be familiar with, be equivalent with. And again, I always think, okay, whenever I see the pi over 2 minus x or x minus pi over 2, I think, okay, this has an equivalence. Can I use it? Should I use it? Negative. You basically what we did is we factored a negative out of here. Because when you take a negative off of x, it becomes minus x. When you take a negative off of pi over 2, it now becomes plus pi over 2. So we basically took a negative off of both of so we factored out an x. Yeah, because the two, yeah, the two doesn't have anything to do with that. We just did use these parentheses to change that sign. Okay, example four. The function e to the negative 2x plus 1 is a composition. Officially, it says use two function machines to show how it could be composed. I'm not so concerned about using function machines. I don't usually teach that. But how could we break this down into an f and a g? And that is, we have to, you know, if it's f of g of x. 
Okay, so if it's f of g of x, and if that's equal to the e to the negative 2x plus 1, then what could we use as f of x? And what could we use as g of x? That's what I'm trying to ask you. With the idea that however we do this, we need to be able to take g and plug it into f and get this e to the negative 2x plus 1. Okay. And keep in mind, there's not one right answer. There are possibility of more than one right answer. So if I'm trying to find what g is and I'm going to plug into f, what would be the easiest thing to do? Take the negative 2x plus 1 and plug it into e to an x. Does that make sense? Yes. And because it's what is next for me to teach to my morning pre-cal class. It was like example four in their notes today, and that's where I got cut off. So, okay, so think about this. F of G of X. So G has to go into F. Does this make sense? Negative 2x plus 1 has to go into f, and it goes into the place of the x value. Does that work? To me, that's probably the obvious one. However, I'm not going to say that's the only right answer. Okay? To me, that is the obvious one, though. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Again, as I said, this is the obvious one. Now, before anything is said out loud, try and do the next one. And I say that because, you know, give yourself a moment to think, can you do example five? The function sine of 2x plus 3 is a composite composite function. Use two function machines to show how it could be composed. So again, I'm compo composing this of f of g of x. And that f of g of x is equal to sine of 2x plus 3. So if that's the case, what could I use as f? What could I use as g? You guys see that? And I assume when she said that, she was saying f is sine x and g is 2x plus 3. Does that one work? We're doing f of g. g has to plug into f. 2x plus 3 plug into sine x. We have other options? I mean, again, this to me is the obvious option. Although whenever I have this on a quiz or a test or something, I remember last year in pre -cal, I started grading, I always have to test them if you come up with something different because sometimes people get some weird ones that actually work. So, I, yeah, to me, plain and simple. Okay, example six, moving along. F is the square root of X. G of X is 2X plus 3. Domain and range of fog and golf. Well, if we're going to do domain and range of fog and golf, we should probably start off by finding fog and golf. Just saying. Let's start with fog. So fog, I always write this out of habit, is f of g of x. So it's f of g of x. What is f of g of x? Yeah, g goes into x, so it's the square root of 2x plus 3. Okay. Let's talk domain on this one. Can I use just any old value of x I want? 
Automatically, the answer should be no because you see a square root. What do we know about square root? Whatever is under the square root has to be positive. So for me to figure out my domain, I'm going to take whatever's under that and set 2x plus 3 greater than or equal to 0. And then you're not guessing values or anything. You have a mathematical way to figure it out. If 2x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0, yeah, subtract 3, divide by 2, x greater than or equal to negative 3 halves. Do we have any other issues there? It's just a simple square root, right? No denominators, nothing like that. So that's my domain. I didn't write it in any fancy form. You can if you want. Okay. So range. We don't think about range as often. It's a little more difficult. We want to know y values. Y values is what your equation can equal. Based on what my equation is, what can my equation equal? Does that make sense? My whole equation is a radical. What has to be true of a radical? A radical has to be positive. So if we're talking about how the fact a radical has to be greater than or equal to zero, that whole radical here represents that whole equation. And that whole equation is y then. So we can say here for our range that y must be greater than or equal to zero. I will never get a negative value for this function because it's a square root. Square roots will always come out to be positive. Does that make sense? Okay, let's try golf. Okay. Goff is g of f of x, so he plugged f into g. So we're plugging the square root of x into g. So 2, square root of x. Now when he said plus 3, that plus 3 is not under the radical, correct? Domain, x values, we have a radical, whatever's under the radical must be positive, so x greater than or equal to zero, no denominators, nothing else fancy, so just x must be Positive. The y intercept is three. So I'm minimum. Okay. What do we know about the radical? Positive. That radical value is going to equal a positive, yes? And so even the smallest radical value that could be is zero. So we agree there. But then what's different about this problem? My y value is not just the radical. It's the radical plus three. Does that make sense? So you have to think about the fact that there's a radical, but then there's three. So the radical, the radical itself has to be greater than or equal to zero. Add 3 to that, so you're always adding at least 3, and now what's it have to be? At least 3, so it has to be greater than or equal to 3. Does that make sense? So y greater than or equal to 3. Technically, could you graph it and look at it? You could, okay? If you graph it and look at it, you guys remember? The square root of x is this right here, yes? The 2 
It's just going to stretch it. So it's just going to make it go up more like that. And what's that three going to do? That three is going to say, okay, it begins there instead. Does that make sense? Okay, these are my the idea of my transformations there. Okay, one more example. Okay, determine whether the following statement is true or false and explain. If f of x equals x squared and g of x equals square root of x, the no domains of Fogg and Goff are equal. Well, what do you think we need to do? Yeah, let's see what Fogg and Goff look like. Fog. So Fog is f of g of x. What does f of g of x look like? Okay, yes. Sorry, so we're taking g, plugging it into x. So we're squaring whatever we put in. So it's the square root of x squared. Which technically, if you go a step farther, is x. Correct? Okay. Um, Goff. Goff is g of f of x. Right? So g of f of x. f into g this time. So we're putting the x squared into the square root. So it's the square root of x squared. Technically, the square root of x squared is x. Are the domains the same? Why not? Okay. Okay, so if we just look at the final results, they're both equal to x, they're both the same, yes? So that makes us think the domains are the same. However, you have to look at, in this situation, where the equations came from. And so backtrack to what you had before you simplified. In this situation right here, what did we have before we squared that? We had a radical. What do we know about radicals? Whatever's under the radical must be positive. Even though we're getting ready to square this, we still have to think about the fact that g of x has to be positive. It has to have a positive domain. Do we have that issue over here? No, because whatever you put in for x, even if you put a negative in for x, it's going to be squared and become positive before you take the square root. So the domain over here instead is all reals. So, true or false? Given that information, the domains are equal. And that is a false. False. You awake now? Yeah. Fog uses only x greater than or equal to zero. Goff uses all reals. Basically, I just restated what I'd written up there. I explained, though. Um, I mean, you might just have to explain. Excuse me. Excuse me. Gosh. Um, you just might have to explain. I don't remember. I don't remember for sure, but yes. So this one does not include Correct. When we're talking about functions, functions are only real numbers. Okay. We don't talk about the imaginary portions. So, yeah. It was review. Again, I'm teaching a lot of the same stuff in pre-cal.